This video will cover how to use the GraphTech Vinyl Cutter. Things that you should have with you are vinyl, which can be purchased from the Fab Lab. These are sold in different sheet sizes, 8.5 by 11, 12 by 24, and then a rolled sheet, it's called stencil vinyl. These have different charges, you could always ask at the Fab Lab desk for pricing info. We have the Vinyl Cutter Instruction Guide or bookmark. You can take one of those off of the placeholder up at the front of the fab. And you'll want to use the PC that sits alongside the vinyl cutter. The vinyl cutter has a maximum cutting area of 14.76 by 164 feet. This means that you can bring in your own vinyl as long as it is thinner than 10 mil or 0.25 millimeter. Let's take a look around the machine. First you'll see a control panel. That control panel there has a digital readout. We also have loading instructions for the vinyl media. We have the cutter which moves up and down and then this gantry that side, slides side, side to side. There's a drive shaft right here that's silver and then we have pinch rollers that we'll have to adjust. All of the controls are on this panel except for the power. The power can be found over here and we'll want to just switch that on. The first step in any project is going to be to load your vinyl. So in this case here we have an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet and what we want to do is place this into the machine, pinch it in there, but also have it so that it's rolling on top of these knurled sections on the drive shaft. You can see that there's a space here that there's no knurled section. They, line, they correspond with blue markings at the top. So we can see that those are the positions where the, the pinch rollers need to be in some way, some configuration. The first step in loading vinyl is going to be power on the unit, which we've done. The next thing would be to lower the wheel pressure bar. The wheel pressure bar has an orange asterisk on it. So you can see right here, this is the pressure bar. Pull that back and down. And what that's done now is to move or lift up the pressure on the pinch rollers. We can now slide these back and forth. Says to next slide media through the front or back, making sure vinyl is square in the machine. To make sure it's square, I like to use this, this edge and line that up as best as possible. That looks good. Now notice that this pinch roller is a little inside the border of the vinyl. Let's slide that out to the outside. This side looks good. Number four says raise the wheel pressure bar. We'll raise that pressure bar and the pinch rollers will go down. And now this vinyl is stuck in there. The next step says using the up and down arrows above, select either sheet, roll one, or roll two. That's referring to these up and down arrows and they correspond to what's prompted on our screen. Currently it says sheet, press enter. Now in this case, we do have a sheet of vinyl. But there's some options here. If we press up, we can see it now says roll one. If we press up again, roll two. So there's three settings, sheet, roll one, roll two. If you have a pre-cut sheet of vinyl, like an eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 24, you'll want to use a sheet. What this will do, the machine will measure the width that it can cut to and the length it can cut to. So it's going to advance the vinyl out and then measure and then bring it back. In the case of a rolled vinyl, which would be sold by the foot, or somehow we call that stencil vinyl here, you'd want to select one of the roll features. Now, how to explain between roll one and roll two? When you have roll one selected, what the machine will do is to identify the leading edge, the edge that has not or has been cut. That's roll one. 
So it's as if you have a brand new roll on the back and you're using this roll for the first time. Switching to roll two, that would be for in an instance where you may have cut something already onto the vinyl and you don't want the machine to go and retract back to the leading edge. In that case there, roll two will only measure the width and not try and find this leading edge. It'll, it'll stay wherever you position it, however far out you may put it. So if you leave it out two feet out, the machine will just measure the width and say it's ready to cut. So we'll jog this to roll or sheet, press enter. When you press enter, the machine will measure the width of the vinyl. Now it'll take the length measurement. And it's going to display the results right here. We have 9.6 by 7.7. .7. This number is very important. However, it goes away. So if you didn't quite get to see it, press the enter button one more time. And what you'll see is that it'll display the measurements for your material. 9.6 by 7.7. .7 take a look at the PC now. Now that our vinyl has been set up, it's calibrated and it's square, we want to open up what's called SCAL or sure cuts a lot. And we have two icons here, one or two. Either one works just in case you can't see it on the white background. You'll also see that there's a note for patrons using SCAL. One thing about the vinyl sheets is that the graph tech cutter can't cut right to the border of the vinyl. It has, a, it has a, a print area or a cutting area and that's within the material. Just like a, a piece of paper in a printer. There's a border to it, a margin. So if you have a 12 inch by 24 inch sheet of vinyl, it really can only cut to a size of 11 inches by 22 and a half. On the 8 and a half by 11 inch sheet, Vinyl sheets can only be printed on a custom mat size of 7.75 by 9.5. These numbers are low in order for people to just use these and still be successful. If you remember, our numbers were on our machine were 9.6 by 7.7. .7. We'll want to remember those after we start Sure Cuts A Lot. Sometimes you'll be presented with a more recent version, press OK. And don't worry about registering the product. And here is the main page of the Sure Cuts A Lot program. The first thing you want to do is set up your custom mat size. So this area here represents your vinyl sheet. We want to make sure that this corresponds with the actual size of our sheet that the machine measured. So to do that, we're going to want to look for customizing this mat. And if I take a look back, we can see that along the top, we have a file, edit, object, path. We also have a button up here called cutter. If I open that up, the first option is mat size. So I can bring that over, click add custom mat size. So my width here, that's going to be your lower number. Your width is your smaller number. That was 7.6. And our height or length was a longer number that was 9.6. Press OK. See the screen flash and now our area, our cutting area, has been updated with those dimensions. So we can see them at the top of the screen. There's a ruler. Okay, to 9.6 and 7.7. .7. With the cutting mat now formatted to your specific sheet vinyl, let's take a look around at some of the tools that we have. Along the top left, you'll find that we have tools for the mouse itself. You have the selection tool, the shape tool. This is going to be in editing nodes or points on your, uh, on your graphic that you want to cut. You have text. We also have a draw tool, and we have zoom in and zoom out, and then a uh, panning tool. Along the top, we have a new page. We can uh, load, 
an, a project or save a project, those are a little different. They're specific to this program. So it's not saving the image, it's saving the project. Here we have an import an SVG or PDF file. We'll talk about the, more in a little bit about those. And a trace image, that would be for a JPEG or a PNG file or a bitmap. And then a shape library. Here we have a preview button and then cut. This is essentially like the print command. Over here we have what's called the control panel or control properties. This will constantly update with uh, in regards to whatever you've clicked on. So right now you can see that this is a mat size. We could have changed it over here. We could have gone to custom mat size and change those settings, but we already have. We'll just double check them, there they are. Click OK. Remember that because you you may want to be, oh, here's eight and a half by 11, let me just click on that, but it won't work like that. Okay, you need to put in that custom mat size. At the bottom of the screen, that's where the shape library is. That references or that's activated by this button right here, the shape library. So it's automatically opened up and you could kind of see that there's some basic kind of clip art shapes and you could just click and they will populate onto your area. Look at the different arrows and lines that make up these these icons. When there's an arrowhead on every side of the line, that means you can move it in all of those directions. So we can move this in all directions, up, down, left, right. Down here, we can see that we can only move it to the right and to the bottom. So if I click on this, it's just going to stretch it. Use the shift tool. The shift tool will make it so it scales proportionally. You could rotate, moving up and down, and so on. Because this is selected, it's outlined, the control panel now shows new features, new options. We can nudge this in different positions, X and Y. We can align it vertically and horizontally. We can also change the width of the image itself. See key proportions. Appearance-wise, you can go and change the, you could flip it. You could change the styles of it if it's a shadow, We'll keep it normal. You'll see that fill color, this won't matter to us because we're simply cutting it out. We're cutting out the vinyl, so a fill color doesn't matter. You can change your line style, however. So if you're using like a card stock in this cutter, you can perforate it. Take a look at importing a file or an image. Let's look at SVG or PDF files. If you have an SVG or scalable vector graphic, you'll want to import using the SVG tool right here. If we click on that, dialog box opens up and we'll look for an SVG file. Scan down to SVG and here we have one. Let's click open. What's nice about SVGs is that they don't lose clarity or resolution as you change their, their size. And you can see the kind of purple outline that makes up the cut pattern. So the dark areas are going to be what would be removed from your vinyl. That's for an SVG. Now if you have just a normal JPEG, it's a little different. We want to click on Trace Image. And now we have a new bo dialog box that opens up. In this Trace Image box, the first thing you want to do is click on Image and Browse. From here, we can take a logo that's just a JPEG or a PNG file and click Open. What the system will do is to try and figure out saying that, okay, it's monochromatic using contrast and uh, sharpness and detail qualities or um, settings. It's going to try and outline what it sees as the, the kind of uh, the, the shape itself, kind of creating an SVG. In fact, you can save this as an SVG. So this, this does essentially con convert it to an SVG. You can see here we do lose some clarity in the lettering. 
That has to do with the fact that it's not a scalable vector graphic we're using. We're using a, a DPI or a PNG file, dots per inch. So let's click OK. Now that's been dropped into our work area. Again, you could still scale it and, and so on. Just a word about importing JPEGs or PNGs or bitmaps. The, whenever there's a large color gradient, Let's say in a true picture, let's, let me show you what I mean, where we take something like, let's say, the penguins. When this gets populated here, our preview is very, very different than what the picture looks like. This is because of the color gradients within all of the image, the blues and the blacks and the shadowing. It makes it tough for the computer to figure out where to draw the line in order to cut. Try and stay away from full color gradient pictures and look more for like logos or things that are monochromatic or, or things that have uh, defined contrasts. Take a look now at adding text. So there's the text tool or type tool. You'll want to click on that and now the text icon is on the mouse itself. You can see the T. Okay. Our control panel has also changed. We now have all the different fonts that we can pull from Word, Microsoft Word. So you could just keep going and select whatever ones you, you would like. You could change the text size, the width, what's called tracking, so letter to letter, and then vertical offset, so line to line. To begin with text, just click, and now we have a large cursor that's appeared. And it's as simple as that. All right, I think we're ready to cut. What we want to do now is take a look up at the cut button. Essentially, it's like a print. We'll click on cut with cutter. When you click on cut with cutter, this dialog box will open up. What we're looking for here is that it says the correct model number should be CE5000, Command GPGL. That's good. This is one thing to know. We've mentioned this in a bookmark. We have a reminder for it on the bottom of the screen. It's called the step cut or the step size. So we'll want to change this value to be 256. There's 256. And here, Let's change that to 256. Looking down, we have that we are cutting with a blade, and we have a speed and pressure. These values here are pretty good at where they are. We've mentioned in our bookmark, as well as in some of the guides that are sitting on the table, that pressure should be between 10 and 17. So in this case here, pressure is a little low. I'm going to bump it up to 13. 13 is a good number to use. Always double check that 256 number. And when you're ready, press cut. That's going to send the data over to the cutter. And it's pretty quick in its cutting path. You can see the blade go up and down. Done. What we want to do is try and take out that vinyl, but the pinch rollers are holding it down pretty secure. So remember that orange asterisk, that bar? Pull that down, and now your vinyl should just come out. Let's see how we did. Now, we do sell transfer tack tape. This transfer tape, what it does is it helps to remove your vinyl from the vinyl backing and adhere it to the, a wall or a car, whatever you might use that for. And it makes it so you don't accidentally move the pieces around too much. And that's it for another additional cost. Ask the Fab Lab staff member for pricing on that transfer tape. And that concludes the vinyl cutter video.